As I probably established with the Halo videos, I'm obviously a glutton for punishment. When I said I might review the rest of the series, well, honestly, I was lying to myself. I knew I had to see the rest of this, and it seems like most of you wanted to hear me complain about it. So here we are. Like I said in the previous video, I honestly think this is the worst video game adaptation of all time, because in reality, it's not an adaptation. Outside of a few scenes and some enemies from the games and there being zombies and a T-Virus and Wesker, this show does not resemble the original games in any way. So you'd really be better off watching any other Resident Evil content than this, even though none of the Paul W.S. Anderson movies or the animated, supposedly canon films reach the quality of the games, at least they're better than this. Because of my own terrible memory and the spastic editing of this show, I've decided to only watch two episodes at a time to give you a more accurate reaction and try not to miss little plot details. And I've decided to combine all of the past scenes and future scenes, respectively, into one coherent plot Otherwise, you'd hear me say, back in the future, about a hundred times over the course of this video. So without further ado, let's just get into this. Episode 2's future plot picks up right where the last episode left off, with Jade landing in the pit of zombies. Luckily, there's a glass panel directly behind her that she hides behind, the zombies can't get through for some reason and an armored SUV shows up, again for no discernible reason, and she jumps on top of it and it drives away. After driving for a bit, the guy stops the car, gets out, and threatens to shoot Jade because she's wanted by Umbrella. She begins to talk him down, and then out of nowhere, like 10 zombies just drop from the top of a bridge and eat the guy. She steals the car and drives away. She eventually arrives in Dover, another safe zone, and she finds some cat lady and talks to her about the Umbrella surveillance state that they have set up in these green zones. And then Jade calls her husband, and she tells the story of what happened over the past couple days. And he tells her to make her way to Calais. Now at first I thought he said Cali, and I'm like, how the fuck are they gonna make it to California? And then the plot of the following episode and a half made no sense. Well, I turned on subtitles, and apparently he said Calais, which is a city in France. I don't know how they would expect the average American to know that, but whatever. And so Jade asks the cat lady if she knows anybody who could get her there, and apparently her husband knew some people, and so of course she asks where's the husband. Well, he's a zombie locked up in the bathroom, which is supposed to be ironic because earlier in the scene, cat lady says she has nothing to hide. And so, in an incredibly stupid scene that follows, Jade armors herself up World War Z style with a rolled up magazine and she's holding a fucking spoon. I guess it's supposed to be funny. Well, as she grabs the pocketbook, the zombie husband escapes and is about to bite his wife. And so Jade has to kill the zombie to save the cat lady. And the cat lady's upset and kicks her out of the house. Honestly, just an awful scene across the board. It's yet another generic zombie trope of keeping around your infected loved one in hope that there's a cure. Again, we've all seen this before. In the scene after this, the fat umbrella guy shows up to question where Jade went, and we find out Jade went to some pub to try and pay for travel to Calais. Apparently, her wedding ring is not worth enough money, so she has to steal some drunk guy's shit and then the scene after this, she's at the dock, waiting to be transported to France. And of course, Umbrella shows up there with a drone with a gun on it, and it starts gunning down all the people, and that's the end of the future plot. Honestly, I thought this plot was okay, at least for an episode of television. Unfortunately, the past plot meanders much, much longer than this. It begins with Billy surviving the bite as it was not on the throat, it was around her shoulder and collarbone. And so you already know where the plot of the next couple episodes is going. We are now tortured with several scenes dedicated to Billy slowly turning, and they try to amp up the drama by making you ask, oh, is she resisting it? Or is she getting more infected? Well, of course she's getting more infected. And probably half of episode two and three is just dedicated to this buildup. And so, getting back to the plot, Wesker shows up first, 
patches up Billy, tells the two to sneak out, and he'll cover for them. In the next scene, we see him talking to the CEO of Umbrella, which is a woman, not just a woman, but also a lesbian that was important for the audience to know. And her name is Evelyn, and unless I missed it in these two episodes, she never says her last name. I'm gonna assume it's Spencer. At least I hope it's Spencer to try and connect it to the games at least slightly. Wesker says that the zombie dog escaping was the result of a hacker. And at the end of the conversation, he pulls a Commander Shepard. I should go. I should go. I should go. I should go. And gets the fuck out of there. In the next scene, we see him caretaking Billy. There's mention directly to COVID. Think so? Will I have to quarantine? No, it's not like COVID. It because of course we gotta talk about semi-current events in our woke Netflix show. Even though Resident Evil very rarely connects to reality in any of the games, but whatever. Kind of a redundant complaint at this point to point out how the show is nothing like the games, so. Moving on. In the next scene, we are led to believe that Billy is immune to the zombie virus, and Wesker is so confident in this that he injects some of her blood into a rat. And we also see that if Wesker doesn't inject himself with his daughter's blood, he starts spazzing out, I don't know if he dies or turns or something. They don't really explain it. And then in the next scene, we see a really forced scene where we learn that some high schooler knows how to get past Umbrella's firewall that doesn't let you visit torrent sites or weird conspiracy theory shit. And Jade wants to visit some dark website of some guy talking about the Tijuana zombie outbreak. And despite obviously being a nerd, this 4 chaner looks nothing like one. And Jade is a complete bitch to him for absolutely no reason. Cute. That comment's cute, not you. You're disgusting. And he still helps her anyway. Then we see Wesker talk to Evelyn again, but it's a completely pointless scene. Wesker tries to weasel his way out of developing the joy drug further, but he pussies out pretty much immediately with no resistance. Then we see that Billy is starting to turn, and of course, nobody's keeping an eye on her. She's just locked herself in a room. What if she became a zombie suddenly and then started the outbreak? This is so stupid. And the Chihuahua starts to detect it, so it starts barking at her. Then we see Jade on the conspiracy theory site. She contacts some dude. The dude doesn't want to show his face, but then Jade says that she's not going to talk to anybody who won't show their face. And despite being an obvious trope of a crazy conspiracy theorist who doesn't trust anybody, he immediately shows his face and explains his backstory. I can't tell if this is bad writing or if it's purposely subversive. It doesn't really matter, we don't learn anything important we didn't already know. Then we see that despite the Chihuahua not wanting to go anywhere near Billy, Billy is able to take the dog on a walk, and the dog escapes its collar, runs off into the distance, some random white guy grabs the dog, and is about to give it back to Billy, but since the dog is barking at her, the guy's like, uh, is this actually your dog? Can you prove it? Of course, Billy leaves her phone at home. Who the fuck does that? But we need forced drama in this scene, so the guy wants to take the dog to the pound, and so Billy being influenced by the zombie virus, goes ballistic and punches the guy in the face, and then she just grabs the chihuahua who doesn't even try to run away at this point. This guy gets fucking floored by a teenage girl. This is just sad in so many ways. And again, it's just petting. This is such a forced scene. Why would the chihuahua be willing to go on a walk with the girl that he or she detects is clearly turning into a fucking zombie and so the dog is terrified? Wouldn't he run away all over the house or something? I don't know. This is just a complete waste of time scene. It annoyed the shit out of me and I don't know what the purpose was. Then we see that Billy's symptoms are steadily getting worse and the rat that was injected with her blood has now turned into a zombie and is trying to escape its little enclosure. And the episode ends there. So yeah, episode 2 wasn't as bad as episode 1. It still kind of sucked because the past plot is so dragged out and so predictable and boring. But at least the future plot this time around was a little bit more interesting. It feels like it's going somewhere. But I just knew when I saw the first episode that the past plot was just going to waste everyone's time. And it looks like I'm already right. Now on to episode 3. It starts off with some sort of 60 minutes type segment. 
where there's an interview going on with Evelyn that actually makes reference to Raccoon City, the original. And much like the original, the US government was able to cover up any evidence of zombies or bioweapons experiments and even the nuclear explosion. But unlike the original, Umbrella was able to escape this unscathed, I guess? Because they don't make any reference to them going bankrupt and then coming back out of nowhere. And honestly, it just makes me hope they never reference Leon or Claire or Jill in this universe. Because this isn't Resident Evil, don't drag down actual good characters with this bullshit. And as is explained in a later scene, yes, the T-Virus exists and is what caused the outbreak. And of course, a small dose of the T-Virus is being used in the Joy drug, which is why it turns people into zombies. In the next scene, Jade checks in on Billy and then lies to her dad about her condition? I honestly have no idea why. Jade just has huge daddy issues and it's not even explained at all, except for, oh, I guess our dad forced us to move to this place I don't like because there's a bunch of white people here. But this still doesn't make sense because if Wesker cares about his daughter, he would barge in there anyway to check if she's fucking turning into a zombie. Then he returns to his laboratory and discovers the rat escaped but he quickly finds it off screen in between scenes and views some of its blood under a microscope and yes, of course, the zombie cells are taking over the living cells or something. Then Jade finds out on the conspiracy theory site that it takes three days for a human to turn into a zombie, which is probably the longest ever in fictional history, at least as far as I'm aware. Three days just seems like an excuse to drag this shit out as long as possible. Which is basically what I already said. I'm just repeating myself at this point. I could probably skip all of the future Billy scenes because it literally is just, oh look, she's turning more and more into a zombie. All you need to know is that she's getting worse and worse hallucinations. She becomes incredibly sensitive to sound. So I guess all zombies have autism or something. <laughs> And we also see that Hacker Dude wants to find out if coffee is good for you and starts falling for Jade despite being verbally abused the entire time he's been on screen. We also learn that he's Evelyn's son, despite the fact she's a lesbian, so this is the third surrogate child in the show so far. On Wesker's side of things, he goes to a huge Umbrella meeting and tries to convince everybody to give them more time because Joy turns people into zombies, as we've been told a few times by now and he uses the rat he captured to emphasize this point. And then Evelyn unveils that they're actually working on a super version of Joy that mind controls people, or at least turns them into sleeper agents of some kind. Being incredibly vulnerable to stimulus, basically making people the perfect consumers, which for obvious reasons would probably make Umbrella the most successful corporation of all time ever. We also find out that it takes 20,000 pills of joy to turn you into a zombie. 20,000? How the hell did they even test for this? Did they just give the Doberman 20,000 fucking condensed pills or something? This is such a high number that it's kind of ridiculous. If you took one pill a day every day, it would take you 54 years to become infected. You would think the body would filter out the poison at that point if it's so insignificant. But maybe it's like a kidney stone and it eventually just builds up, I don't know. And so of course Evelyn makes the argument that that's way too many pills for it to realistically infect anybody. And honestly she's probably right. In the next scene Wesker tries to convince Evelyn to delay the project so he can at least find a cure for the zombie virus. And he convinces her by telling her that just imagine how much money Umbrella could make if they were the only ones who controlled the cure. Which makes sense. And then in a super cringe moment, Evelyn grabs the zombie rat and chops its head off with scissors. I am so fucking tired of this girl boss shit. Fuck Netflix, man. As for the future plot this episode, it begins where the last one left off, with the drone shooting everyone at the docks. Jade escapes into a shipping container and meets another family that tells her an alternate route to Calais. We're told some details about this family of three, but honestly, they don't fucking matter. You'll see by the end why. It's yet another generic zombie trope episode. And so in the next scene, Jade pays for passage through these tunnels. And halfway through the tunnels, we find out this is liquor territory. Yes, finally, another Resident Evil thing in the Resident Evil show. 
Unfortunately, the Umbrella Fat Guy and his troops are right behind them and they make a shit ton of noise. And apparently they have no idea what liquors are, which makes no sense. And so we get a pretty decent horror scene where the liquors start impaling a bunch of people with their tongues and tackle some people and kill them. And the CGI is kind of shitty, but it's probably the best scene in the show so far, so I'll let it slide. And almost everybody dies except for Jade, the family she's traveling with, and this one guy who has a triple barrel shotgun, which could also be a Resident Evil reference, possibly, but it's probably just a coincidence. And I want to point out something that I mentioned in the first episode. I think this show reuses props from the Halo TV show. Remember when I pointed out that they had vectors that they put a bunch of sci-fi crap on to make them look like unique guns, which is exactly what the evil resistance leader guy's men from Halo used? Well, in this episode, Jade uses a Rhino revolver, which is exactly the same gun that Soren from the Halo show had. Most of you probably don't care about this, but honestly it just shows how supremely lazy these production companies are. They probably all rent out the same sci-fi props. The worst part of the scene is that while the Umbrella Dude's men get swatted like flies, Jade is able to stop a liquor by slamming a car door into its face. Which is incredibly lame, especially showing how they're so powerful in this universe that their tongues can pull a grown man through the air which I guarantee they did just to save on CGI, and the remaining survivors slip off into a service tunnel. Now, as they're traveling through the service tunnel, we see another Resident Evil reference, as there's a giant spider that attacks them, though this is way more badass than the tarantulas from Resident Evil 1, as this thing can impale a person through the chest with its legs, and Jade's Rhino revolver does absolutely nothing to it. I'm gonna hope that she just missed because she sucks. Making these monsters bulletproof is not very Resident Evil, I gotta say. I'll try not to say that too many more times over the course of this video. We also find out that the child of the family hanging out with Jade has been infected for three days, so he's about to turn into a zombie. Jade tries to convince them they gotta leave their son behind because as she knows from her past, when you start to turn, you stop caring about your family and become a giant asshole. I skipped over a scene last episode where Billy attacks both the hacker nerd guy and Jade because it really didn't matter to the plot. Of course, the family's not going to give up their son, and so the father sacrifices himself, not even using a gun against the giant spider, but a fucking pipe. And so Jade and the mother and son manage to escape. She slams a gate on top of the spider. And now the child is starting to turn to a zombie, but the mother still won't let him go, so Jade just leaves her behind at the end of the tunnel, while a shitty cover of I'm Only Human plays. And as you might expect, Umbrella was waiting on the other side of the tunnel, and just as she's about to be captured, the Brotherhood, presumably, shows up, shoots the fat guy, the rest of the Umbrella guys drop their weapons, and Jade gets butt-stroked across the face for no reason, and that's the end of episode 3. Honestly, marginally better than episode 2, because at least there were some connections to the games. Seeing the liquors was kinda cool, I guess. At least by this show's standards. And while watching Billy slowly turn to a zombie is incredibly tiring, at least the Wesker and Evelyn part of the past plot is slightly more interesting. So while the show still sucks ass, at least it is getting slightly better. Now on to episode 4 and 5. I was actually somewhat surprised by these two. The show actually went in a slightly different direction than I had anticipated, mostly for the better. Starting with episode 4, the past plot starts off by showing us how the conspiracy theory guy found out about what happened in Tijuana. Apparently he lived there and was a journalist but wasn't making jack shit for money, and it seems like he was hoping this story with this woman telling about her experience with the Umbrella Factory there would be his big break. And so she tells him the story of how her husband got infected and his symptoms over the course of three days as he turned into a zombie. Then in the next scene, we see that Wesker fails to find a cure for Billy and that she only has three hours left until zombification. And speaking of Billy, she decides that she wants to go to a party and potentially infect a shit ton of people when she turns. Our selfless heroes, ladies and gentlemen. And so they make their way to the party. 
we find out that the party is taking place in like a construction zone. And Hacker Guy apparently is a skateboarder as well and does some trick on a half pipe and lands on some pillows or some shit. I don't know. I was having trouble paying attention at this point, I'll be honest. Billy wants to prove herself, so she does it too. But Jade wasn't watching her do it because she's in love with Hacker Guy. I fucking hate teenage drama, guys. I hate it so fucking much. Please make it stop. Then we see that Conspiracy Guy has somehow infiltrated New Raccoon City. I thought you had to check into some kind of gate or something, I don't know. In any case, he gets caught on camera and Evelyn recognizes him. Then we see that Wesker has a chair set up with handcuffs for when Billy turns so that he can contain her there to look for a cure. Unfortunately, the daughters are not home so that he can chain her up, and so he goes to look for them. Then back at the party, Billy starts talking shit about her sister, about how she's selfish and an asshole and all that stuff, honestly being the voice of the audience, which was a little cathartic, but honestly wasn't deserved from Billy because if anything, Billy's the only character that Jade cares about. Then the party scatters for some reason, I honestly couldn't figure this out, as the conspiracy guy shows up and goes and finds the girls and tries to warn them about the zombie virus. They don't believe him. And he also tells us that Wesker died in 2009. Is Resident Evil 5 canon in this universe too? Because I'm pretty sure that's when it takes place. And if so, that makes the modern Wesker even less believable. How the hell do you go from trying to make an army of Ubermensch by wiping out 95% of the world population, or whatever his plan was, with Ouroboros, to being like a nerdy scientist shitty dad? In any case, the sisters escape and the conspiracy guy gets arrested. Then we see him tied up and Evelyn interrogates him and he tries to reason with her and lets her know some of what he knows. And then both the past and future play side by side in this scene, but I'm going to ignore that for the sake of this summary. Basically, Billy's timer runs out, but nothing happens. Now here's the problem with this scene that I'm sure some of you also thought of. There's no way that timer was accurate down to the minute. You're telling me they knew exactly when Jade got bit by the zombie dog? No fucking way. Through all of that trauma, you're telling me they looked at the clock right afterward? Somehow I doubt it. In any case, the point of this scene is to show that I've been subverted. Billy's immune system actually fought off the zombie virus, and this is explained in the next episode. Now for the future plot. This was actually pretty interesting this episode, I'm not gonna lie. It begins with Jade and Fatty being taken to Calais, and for whatever reason, Fat Guy references SpongeBob. I freaking love SpongeBob. I mean, his best friend's a starfish. This is something that is consistently annoying about this show, is that it'll keep referencing real-world popular names and franchises and IPs. This is why I hate references and referential memes in general now. Because that in itself is supposed to be a joke. But here's the thing. This is even worse than a meme, because he's just vocally referencing it. There's no clip. There's no SpongeBob icon shown on the screen. This is like one of those lazy Marvel movie references to get the boomers, or in this case, younger millennials and zoomers, to be more invested. Because I know what that is. We also learn this scene that the Brotherhood are crazy cultists who crucify people upside down if they're a non-believer. Yeah, get ready for some anti-religion propaganda in this episode. And so we learn that they're being taken to a secret Nazi laboratory? I wish I was making this up, but yeah, I don't know what else to call it. I thought it was a prison or possibly a concentration camp at first. And apparently the Brotherhood have found a way to control the zombies to work for them. And so the duo are taken to the leader of the cult. And this Frenchman believes that all the survivors are God's chosen and the zombies are his gift to the world. This is never explained, by the way. They're just generic crazy cultists. It's another zombie trope box that had to be checked for this show. Both Jade and Fatty try to reason with the guy, Fatty offering money or drugs, and Jade trying to convince him that zombies are bad. Yeah, that's really all she says, zombies are bad. And so she punches the guy in the face and they both get thrown in a cell. And Fatty tries to convince Jade to come back with him to Umbrella. And it turns out he's a Redditor as he calls his two dogs his kids. Yes, an actual fur baby reference. 
and it's explained to us directly, even though it was already shown earlier, that the zombies are working for the cultists, and they have a Mr. Salvador that chops up humans and feeds it to a Screecher zombie, and the Screecher zombie can control the other zombies. Then Fat Guy reveals he has a plan to escape, calls himself the Master of Unlocking, yes really, and pleads with Jade to help him escape. She eventually helps him, they break out of the cell, Fatty pushes a guy over the railing and he makes a Wilhelm scream. Any fucking editor who puts in the Wilhelm scream needs to be blacklisted from the fucking industry. I'm tired of hearing it. It's not funny. Everyone gets the reference. You're not clever. You're not cool. You're not part of any club. Stop doing it. Then Mr. Salvador shows up and I was hoping we'd get some cool Resident Evil 4 reference or something. But no, he just gets shot in the head by a Mauser, which could be a Red 9 reference. But still, it was a lame anti-climax. They blue-balled us on purpose. Then some backup Umbrella troops show up out of nowhere. It's barely even addressed. And Fatty accidentally releases every zombie, because of course he can't read German. And then we get a surprisingly cool scene, where Fat Guy kills like 40 zombies. It seems really out of character, and it is a little goofy, but it's the most entertaining thing that's happened in the show so far, so I'll let it slide. Of course, Jade takes this chance to slip away from him, and she finds out that the Screecher is a zombie queen, which is just fucking stupid, but whatever. She isolates the queen and kills it with a chainsaw, but then the zombie horde chases her down. She locks herself in a cell. She calls her daughter one last time, attempting very poorly to convince the audience she's gonna die here. It's only episode four, and she's the main fucking character. I mean, really. And of course, her phone only has 1% battery left, so she barely has time to even tell her daughter that she's proud of her and loves her and yada yada. So she decides to go out fighting, but the chainsaw won't start back up. But thankfully, she finds not just one grenade, but like five of them. And they're not even German grenades, they're American grenades, so who knows how those ended up in a Nazi laboratory, but whatever, okay. The very last grenade that she decides to throw is a dud, and so she prepares to fight them with just a wrench, but as soon as the zombies break down the door, that somehow sets off the grenade, and there's a huge explosion, but of course Jade is just fine, and just as one surviving zombie is about to bite her, Fatty saves her, and the two of them run and try to escape the building. And as Jade climbs up a ladder, Fatty is clinging to her. And she can't pull him up. And so, of course, he gets grabbed by zombies and eaten. Which sucks, because I was actually beginning to like him. More than Jade, at least, which is really not saying much. But at least he had a cool action scene. What a shitty way to go out. And Jade climbs her way out of the hole and is found by a helicopter. And that's the end of the episode. Again, I think I'm gonna say this is actually slightly better than the last episode. Although the plot in the past still sucks, at least it's getting less annoying, and it did subvert my expectations in a way that's honestly just fine. While I still don't really like Billy, I don't hate her anymore, she's not as obnoxious as she was. And now that they've referenced that the Raccoon City incident has actually happened in-universe, and possibly also Resident Evil 5 happened, I'm kind of interested to see what they do with this. I'm sure they're gonna butcher it horribly, but... at least it has my attention for now. As for the future plot, it was a pretty generic, Monster of the Week type of episode, with a generic evil cult that is vaguely reminiscent of Christianity, and there's a fucking zombie queen, which is just stupid. There's already multiple spin-offs of zombies in the Resident Evil universe, and all sorts of T-Virus created bio-organic weapons they could have used. There's no reason to have a zombie queen. But I will say the action scene with Fat Guy was legitimately entertaining, if a little ridiculous. So we're about up to a 4 out of 10 at this point. Episode 1 was like a 2 out of 10, then now we're up to 4. Still not watchable, but it's a step in the right direction. So on to episode 5. This episode is almost entirely in the past. There's only two future scenes that last less than a minute each. The very first showing that of course the helicopter is more umbrella troops and they're led by dun dun dun. There's a cliffhanger. But yes, I absolutely guessed immediately that it was Billy. 
Because think about it, if she's immune to the zombie virus, she must have survived. And even though we were told last episode that she died, I'm assuming Jade was being metaphorical. And yes, I was right. Now on to the past plot. This episode is full of Resident Evil references, which doesn't really redeem the show for me. I'm not the type of guy who is impressed by fan service. You should know this if you watch my video game reviews. But this episode, I'll say, was interesting for a different reason, and we'll go into that. So the episode begins with Wesker discovering that the girls made it home, but instead of going home himself, he is forced by a security guy to go meet with Evelyn immediately. He's taken to where the conspiracy guy is being held, and is told about his backstory as a journalist, and we are given yet another award-winning line from Netflix writers. The only people who believed him were conspiracy freaks and 4chan virgins, or both. This is implying a lot of things. It's implying, one, that conspiracy theories are often correct, two, that Pohl was right, again, and likely right about a whole lot of other things, and also three, that the writers are a bunch of fans. Oh! Seriously though, these real life references are getting increasingly more cringe, and this is not the last one. Then the journalist reveals that he knows Wesker's daughters, and so Wesker tortures the guy, revealing some of his old personality, I guess. Then back with Jade and Billy, they start talking about how they have no idea who their mothers are, and for some reason they reference Rick and Morty? You know, the donors, Rick and Morty, our surrogate. And so the duo agree to find their birth certificates. They search their dad's room and find a dog whistle, a handgun magazine, and a laptop. So Jade calls her hacker boyfriend. He breaks into the laptop. He finds some stuff about William Birkin, which they don't investigate into further. And they find a secret email that would be sent to Billy if anything ever happened to Wesker that gives her instructions to escape Umbrella and start a new life with Jade. Then the hacker guy tells them that there's a bunch of secret cameras in their house and helps them avoid the cameras. The problem is, something really stupid happens. Apparently, there's a camera hidden in the thermostat that is directly facing the stairs, right? So apparently they have to crouch super down low on the stairs to avoid the camera. Here's why this doesn't make any fucking sense. Not only is it facing the stairs, but the stairs have a clear glass railing. There is no avoiding this camera. What the fuck is the camera even looking at if it's able to be avoided? This makes no sense. You're treating the audience like a bunch of idiots. Seriously, just take a look at this for yourself. It's clearly facing directly at the stairs. There's no way they could have avoided this camera without jumping off. So anyway, they do a bunch of Metal Gear style crawling around to avoid the other cameras. They find a hidden note in a picture frame which references something that happened in Jade's childhood. And she figures out that Wesker used to play Moonlight Sonata to calm her down. And so they head back upstairs. The two girls play it. I'll actually give the show a little bit of credit here. I enjoy this reference for multiple reasons. The more important one being that it is a legitimate puzzle inside their house, which actually is probably the most Resident Evil this show has felt so far. And it turns out there's another note hidden under one of the piano keys. And they figure out that there's a hollow socket under the piano that has a bag with a bunch of money, a gun which is presumably a Beretta 92 referencing the Samurai Edge. And so right after this, since this episode has actually been pretty decent so far, they have to ruin it by having forced drama between the two sisters because Jade can't believe that Wesker prefers Billy over herself and they have to insult each other and there's drama and Hacker Guy is just awkwardly listening to this shit. Then the two settle their differences, and they try to find the basement in the house, because apparently all of these house units have a basement. They discover that it's locked with some kind of ID system, and so they decide to blow on the dog whistle, another reference to Resident Evil 1, and the Chihuahua comes over, and they figure that the ID chip must be in the dog, and they're right. So then they go into the basement, they lose the signal to their hacker dude, and they discover that Wesker has kept a bunch of their childhood toys, the chair with handcuffs that was meant to hold Billy, and vials of their blood. They also discover a box labeled Raccoon City 1998 that has a CD-ROM containing footage of Wesker actually being in his leather jacket, though we only see him from behind, 
and he injects something into Lisa Trevor. Yes, Lisa Trevor is in this show, and I'm guessing it's the G-Virus because it opens up an eye on her back. Jade also finds some journal entries about Billy documenting her transformation into a zombie and revealing if she turned that Wesker was going to contain her in the chair. The girls are obviously pretty freaked out by this, so they try and unplug one of the computers and it sets off a self-destruct sequence for all the files. The door is sealed back upstairs so they can't escape. Thankfully, it's only to burn the files themselves and there's a fire extinguisher protocol or something that saves them and then of course Wesker steps in and unfortunately this is where the episode goes to shit. Wesker decides to tell them their mother's names but the daughters are of course still suspicious of him. He gets closer, Jade pulls a knife on him. Wesker actually starts to act like a man for once and grabs her hand and tries to take control and then Billy smacks the back of his head with a fucking metal pan, knocking him unconscious. God fucking damn it, dude. This episode was actually pretty good up until this point. And then Albert Wesker gets knocked out by a fucking 14-year-old girl. And so, of course, they handcuff him to the chair meant for Billy, and he admits that the two girls are genetically modified ubermensch. Yes, really, their genes were altered as embryos, apparently, which is why Billy's immune system was strong enough to fight off the virus. He then tells them that unless he protects them, Umbrella will come after them for obviously being the cure to the zombie virus. And so the girls let him go, and the episode ends back in the future again, where yes, it's revealed that it's Billy from the future who works for Umbrella now. And yeah, I gotta say, episode 5 is probably the best episode yet. Honestly, it really is carried by all the references to the previous Resident Evil games. And the setup of Wesker's house being kind of like the Spencer Mansion is honestly just a cool idea, even on its own. But all the things that are annoying about the show are still kind of annoying. There's forced teenage girl drama. This teenage hacker boy is just basically a simp to Jade for no reason. He's done so much for the sisters with not even a kiss in return. And Wesker being such a fucking beta male cuck is pissing me off, dude. There better be a damn good explanation for this in the next couple episodes. He is Wesker in name only. There is literally no other similarities, and it's just getting annoying. That said, this episode was decently entertaining. Things actually happened. The fact that it didn't constantly cut between the past and the future, which really fucks up the pacing of this show. It's something I haven't really talked about much. No, this time it was just 45 minutes of two teenage girls investigating their house, which has cool Resident Evil puzzles in it. And Lisa Trevor being in the show is definitely something I never expected would happen. So yeah, I'd say this one's like a 5 out of 10. It's not something I would recommend anybody watch to entertain themselves, but it is a perfectly average piece of television. And that's where this video is gonna come to a close. As much as I'd like to talk about the remaining three episodes, this video has become way too long at this point. So yeah, things are actually looking up. I'm sure the show will disappoint me by the end, but I think some of the producers or showrunners realized that the only way people would watch this show is if they actually put in Resident Evil references. It's too bad that you have to sit through one of the worst first episodes I've ever seen to get to this point. So that's about it. I'll see you next time, guys.